Okay, we have one more question involving the binomial distribution and it's regarding acceptance sampling. The idea of acceptance sampling enables manufacturers and purchasers to test if a batch of products meets specifications. For example, before selling light bulbs to consumers, a light bulb manufacturer will want to know if the bulbs meet specifications, such as light life, or if a large percentage are defective. Automobile manufacturers will want to know if a large percentage of computer chips that were ordered for their new automobiles are defective. So the way we're going to do this is by not testing the entire population of light bulbs. Because if we were to test the entire population of light bulbs for their length of life, then we would kill off every member of the population. Every item in the every item in the inventory would be lost if we did testing like that. So that's why it's called acceptance sampling, because it involves finding a sample of the population and testing that sample. Because it's just not possible to test the entire population. Okay, it's either impossible or impractical to inspect every item before accepting a batch of products. A solution is to randomly sample a small batch of products and infer that the results of testing the sample would be similar to the results if the entire batch of products were tested. So one of the very first things we talked about in this class was if we have a random sample it's truly representative of the population. So what our goal is is to randomly sample our batch of products and then using that small sample test the sample and if we were to accept the sample then we'll, we will accept the population because we're going to assume that the sample is representative of the population. It's called, this is what is called acceptance sampling. In uh, the binomial distribution is used to help draw these inferences about the entire population from a small sample selected. So we're going to look at a problem involving acceptance sampling and we're going to solve it with the binomial uh, distribution. This is example 6.19. Suppose that a shipment of 10,000 computer chips are defective. Uh, 20, I'm sorry, 25% of a shipment of 10,000 computer chips are defective. The automobile company that ordered the shipment does not know the total percent defective. So they don't know that 25% are defective. So, but they do want to test a sample of 20 chips. So from the 10,000, they take a sample of 20 and they want to see whether or not they are defective. The automobile company will accept the shipment, the whole shipment of 10,000, if less than 10% of the 20 sample chips are defective. Less than 10% of the 20 sample chips are defective. What's the probability that the company accepts the shipment? Okay, so the company will accept if less than 10% of the 20 are defective. So we basically have to figure out what's the probability that less than 10% of the 20 are defective. That's the same probability that the company will accept the shipment. So 10% of 20, what is that? We've got to figure that out first. In other words, what's the probability that less than 10% of the 20 sample chips are defective? So let's look at 10% of 20. 25% 25 of a shipment of 10,000 computer chips are defective. What's the probability that less than 10% of the 20 sample chips are defective? So we have the truth, which the automobile manufacturer does not know. 25% of 10,000 are defective. That's known to us. That's not known to the automobile manufacturer. We want to find the probability that less than 10% of 20 are defective. Identify N, P, and S. Okay, in this class, an acceptance sampling question is always going to be solved with binomial probability. So you're always going to look for N, P, and S. 
n the number of trials. How many of these are you testing? How many of these chips are you testing? That is the value for n. p, the probability of success on a single trial. Success for this problem means a defective computer chip. So success means defective. P, the probability of success, is the probability that a chip is defective. And we know that that is 25%. 25% of the shipment is defective, so the probability that a single chip is defective is 25%. S, the number defective, this is going to come out of the words less than 10% of 20. So we have to figure out 10% of 20. N is 20. Those are the number of items in the sample. P is 0.25. That's the true probability that a single item is defective. The probability of success on a single trial. P is the probability of success on a single trial. Okay, And a single trial is a single chip. What's the probability of that one chip being defective? 25%. The company will accept if less than 10% of the sample uh, 20 are bad. So 10% of 20, you should recognize that 10% of 20 is 2. So if less than 2 are bad, the shipment will be accepted. Less than 2 means 0, 1. So we are going to add up two probabilities, the probability of zero being bad and the probability of one being bad. Okay, so two probabilities, two binomial PDFs on the calculator separated with a plus sign, and we'll just be able to add them up right on our calculator. So we have N, the number of things that are being sampled. P, the probability of success on a single trial. So what's the probability that a single trial has a defective chip? Or a single chip is defective. That's 0.25. And S, the number of successes, zero successes or one success. We're going to add up the probability of zero being success. Um, we're going to add up the probability of zero being defective plus the probability of one being defective. Okay, so let's go to our calculator. Second, DISTR, binome PDF. So we're sampling 20 chips. The probability that one is defective is 0.25, 25%. X value, the number of successes, we're going to first do zero. And then we're going to add, we're going to add a success of 1. OK. Enter. OK, and enter. And we have 0 0.0243 when rounded to four decimal places, 0 0.0243. Okay, so what we can, we can recap this as meaning the probability that a shipment will be accepted if 25% of the 10,000 are defective is 2.43%. Okay, so 2.43%, do you think that that's reasonable? Would you accept the chance of accepting the shipment at 2.43% if we know that 25% are truly defective? Okay, nobody would really want to accept a shipment if 25% were really defective. That's way too high. So the, ch the chance that you do accept it, though, is 2.43%. So we have to think, is that reasonable? Is there a way we can get this to be lower? The, this is the chance, or this is the probability of making an error in choosing the ch to accept the shipment. And is there any way that we can get that error to be lessened? Okay, because 
if we think about it, if we take 100% and minus 2.43%, uh, this is the probability that the shipment will be rejected, 97.57%. So the probability that it will be accepted is 2.43%. The probability that, which is the probability that it's going to be rejected at 97.57%. Um, a study in probability like this can show us the chance that the manufacturer makes a poor decision based on the sample test. So it's possible that the manufacturer makes a bad decision but our job is to hopefully lessen that chance. So in this case if 20 items are sampled there's a 2.43 percent chance that the manufacturer makes the wrong decision to accept the shipment when 25 percent of the whole shipment is defective. What do you think a manufacturer could do to lessen the 2.43 percent chance of making a wrong decision? Okay, so if I were asking a class, maybe somebody in the class would say, let's increase the size of a sample. So let's try it. Let's see what happens if instead of a sample of 20, we use a sample of, say, 40. Sample size is 40. Second, DISTR. Let's do the same problem again. Let's change our sample size from 20 to 40. And let's see if that chance of making a wrong decision is lessened. So we're going to do 40, 0.25, 0. And then we're going to add that to binome PDF. Trials are 40, probability is 0.25, x value or s is 1. Let's see what happens. Adding the two probabilities up, okay. We have 1.4414, but at the end here, e to the negative 4, which makes this much smaller probability. If we move this decimal point four spaces to the left, we go 1, 2, 3, 4 the probability reduces to 0.0001%, I'm sorry, 0 0.0001, which is 0.01%, which is a much smaller probability and something that's more likely to occur in the real world. Okay, we'd probably not be satisfied with 2.43%, 0 0.0001 would be more acceptable. Okay, and that is acceptance sampling, and that is binomial probability. Uh, this concludes Chapter 6. I know this was a tough chapter. This is not the easiest uh, thing for students to get a hold of, but recognize that every single question asked you for N, P, and S. And if you can figure that out on every question, you can do any binomial probability question. The key is recognizing N, P, and S. Okay, if you have any questions, Feel free to email them to me or post them in the discussion forum. I'll see you at the next lecture.